so welcome to Yoga Over 50 from Blue Point Yoga Studio. My name is Lynn. Um, I can't see you just now, but I'll see you later. So it, I, I looked and I see that there are people out there. So welcome. And um, I'm glad to be here and able to do this today. So um, a couple things about props that you might like to have. So uh, we're headed for a bit of standing half moon later. So you might like as a prop um, either a wall that you can back up to or a doorway that you could stand in or a chair, just a plain old dining chair so that you can put your um, hand on the uh, seat of the chair or the back of the chair for a little balance support. Another thing you might like is we're going to be um, raising our legs uh, over the hips. So you might like something to just prop your bum up a little bit. Uh, maybe a folded towel or a small pillow or something like that. Um, or, or you might like a, uh, a strap or some facsimile of a strap to use on your legs. But um, I think you can get by without any of those things. So if you don't have them to hand um, or can't get them easily, uh, don't worry about it. Okay. So we will begin uh, lying down and I'll lie down too. Oh. And I meant to mention, it turns out that these headphones, which I was using last time, have a touch control on the right earphone. And so when I raise my arms up alongside my head or do something else that touches the um, ear pad, it cuts the sound out for me. I can still talk, but I can't hear anything, which is kind of disconcerting. So if that happens, I'll have to repair my earphones with my iPhone, which I'm using for the camera. So just be patient, please. It turns out there's no way to disable that feature without taking the whole thing apart and disconnecting some wires. And I, they're my husband's earphones, so I don't think I'll do that. Okay, so we will begin. Let's lie down. So make yourself comfortable on the floor. You can have your knees bent and your feet flat. Just make sure I'm still in the screen. Um, in any case, let your palms turn up toward the ceiling. Just rest your arms comfortably away from your body on the floor. When you turn your palms up toward the ceiling, it lets the shoulders roll away from the front of the body and relax toward the floor. And that would be the first order of business, is just to be relaxed. So check around. Take a bit of a scan, starting with your right foot, say and running up through the right leg and the right hip just looking for any places where your body might be tense where it might be kind of holding itself up away from the floor see if you can let it down onto the floor on up the right side of the body to the right shoulder down the right arm into the back of the right hand up the right side of the neck and the right side of the face and into the head, letting the head rest heavily into the floor. And down the left side of the face and the left side of the neck into the left shoulder. Down the back of the left arm into the left hand. Down the left side of the torso into the left hip. Down the left leg into the left foot, everything resting heavily into the floor. Draw your attention inward, let your eyes close or let your gaze be soft, not looking at anything in particular. And let your attention rest on your breath. Just following the movements that your torso is making and indeed that your whole body is making as you breathe in and breathe out. Not manipulating the breath at this point, just observing it and observing it without any judgment. Now 
And then maybe we'll manipulate it just a little bit. So take what seems like a normal breath in. And then when you've got your lungs, what seems to be filled up, fill them up a little more. So see if you can purposely give them a bit of a stretch. Feeling the ribs flare out a little extra. Maybe you'll feel a little extra space between the ribs. Maybe you might even feel as if the lungs themselves are getting a stretch, maybe kind of unsticking some parts that might have been stuck together. And then let all that breath out. So be sure to exhale fully. Don't short stop your exhale. And then take another one of those. You're, we're lying down, so there's not too much danger that we're going to overventilate, hyperventilate, and hit the floor because we're already on the floor. So just try that a few times. Stretching the lungs out, stretching the ribs out, and then exhaling very fully. And after you've done that a few times, you can let your breath return to its unobserved state. Sometimes when I do that, I feel a little crackling sensation. I don't know if that's the lungs themselves or the little muscles between the ribs. Just getting a little more exercise than they usually get from breathing. So we'll begin with a little warm up here. So I've got to be careful when I raise lower my arms over my head. I'm going to bend one knee at a time and bring the feet flat and the knees bent, just leaving the arms out to the side for the moment. And we'll just articulate the spine a little bit on the floor. So on an exhale, press the small of the back into the floor. It lifts the tailbone up away. And on the inhale, press the tailbone on the floor, exaggerating the small of the back rising away from the floor and move back and forth at pace of your own breath a few times between those positions. So we're rocking the pelvis back and forth, changing where the weight is pressing into the floor. On the exhale, it's the top of the rim of the pelvis that presses into the floor, and on the inhale, it's the tailbone that presses into the floor, at the bottom part of the pelvis. And then let that rocking settle down to where you have what seems to be the natural position of the spine for you. If you feel with us your fingers at the small of your back, you probably feel maybe a little bit of space. It varies from person to person how much space is between the floor and the waist part of your spine. And now we're going to rock in the other dimension. So if you put your fingertips on the uh, bony corners at the front of the hips, we're going to, on an exhale, press the back of the right hip into the floor, and you'll feel your right hip just press up into your fingers a little bit. You're not actually, and then the other way. It doesn't really matter which is the inhale and which is the exhale. You're not lifting your hips off the floor. You're just rocking the pelvis from side to side. So one side's going down, and the other side, because it's kind of hooked to it, is going up, and you'll feel your knees kind of wobbling forward and back. That's the main thing that you feel elsewhere other than the hips. So we'll just do a little bit of that using the muscles in your torso, so the lower part of your torso to make those motions. They're quite small. If you don't feel any moving up and down, don't worry about it. Just let your brain send the signals there and eventually your body will catch on and be able to move. And now we're going to move in a third dimension so on an inhale, stretch the right side of your body so that you can fingertips can feel your right hip kind of sliding down toward your foot away from your right shoulder. And then come back through the center on an exhale. And on the next inhale, slide the left hip away from the left shoulder. Again, you're not moving very far. You're just sort of taking a dotted line across the hips 
and making that line slant first down toward one heel and then down toward the other heel, just swiveling back and forth like that. And then let's come back to a centered position. Might lift the hips up, stretch them away from your body and set them back down on the floor. And now without lifting your right foot away from the floor, skid the right foot away from you. So you just letting the leg lengthen without using the muscles at the front of the hip to hold the leg away from the floor. And now on an exhale, we'll draw the foot back in. So if you keep your heel on your mat, it whoop, makes it easier, then you don't sort of st get stuck on the edge of the mat. And then on the other side, leading the weight of the leg into the left heel, skid that heel away, stretching that leg out, and then use an exhale, use the abdominal muscles to draw that heel back in closer to your body. And then again to the other side, inhaling to press the right heel away and exhaling to draw it back in. And once more on the left, inhaling to press the left heel away and exhaling to draw it back in. It lengthens the big muscle at the front of the hip flexors when you just passively stretch the leg away from you. And now let's on an exhale, bring the right knee into the chest and press the left foot away. Take a long stretch between the two legs. You can hold behind the thigh or on top of the shin, whichever you like. And just really take a luxurious stretch there. You can bring that uh, right knee out toward the right shoulder for a little different kind of stretch. And maybe bring it across your body for a little different sort of stretch around the back of the left hip. And back to the center. Let the foot come to the floor. Let the weight of the leg rest as you skid that foot away from you and then exhale to bring the left knee on toward the chest. Give it a good squeeze, stretch the right heel away from you on the floor and take that knee out a little bit toward the left shoulder, a little different stretch and back through the center and toward the middle of your body a little bit. Maybe you feel that on the outside of the left hip a little bit. And back to the center and let that foot drop to the floor and skid it away from you. Stretch the arms up overhead. I'm going to stretch out in kind of a wide V to avoid canceling my earphones. And take a little extra stretch along the left side of your body, pressing away with the left heel and reaching out through the left fingertips and come back to the center and then go to the other side, stretching out through the right heel, reaching up through the right fingertips, let the breath and come back to the center and let the arms come back down to the sides and one at a time, bend the knees to bring the feet flat to the floor. Sorry, I have to keep looking at my watch to check out what I'm doing here. So I'm going to swivel around because I think it'll be easier for you to see what I'm doing here if I face my bum toward you. I know that's a little weird, but that's what we're going to do. So, so we're going to lie on the floor and bring the legs up overhead. So here's where you might like to have a little prop under your, under your um, bum to make it easier to bring the legs up overhead. So just stretch the legs toward the ceiling a moment. So we're going to just have a little exploration of the things that the legs can do out of the hip joint. So one thing they can do is flex, which is what we're doing right now, where we've closed up the distance between the legs and the torso. Okay. And now with the legs flexed, we're going to move the legs away from the midline of the body. If you like, you can uh, put a strap around your feet to keep them up overhead more easily, or you can hold them with your hands. Anyway, let the legs come out in kind of a wide V. So we're abducting the legs away from the midline of the body. But we still have the knees and the toes facing in their uh, kind of normal direction. So we haven't rotated the legs out of the hips yet. And then we could in the center, that's the other opposite motion, the adduction. And we could even keep the legs coming and we could cross the legs across. So now we're moving the legs across the midline, adducting them. Let's do that with the 
opposite crossing of the legs, and then bring them back to the center. And now we're going to turn the legs out from the hips. So the feet are now going to be pointing sort of away from each other. So that's an external rotation at the hip. And then we could point the toes in toward each other. That's an internal rotation at the hip. And then we'll bring them back to the center. I think I'll prop my bub up here a little bit more comfortable. And now let your legs come away from the body. So we're letting them abduct. And then we're going to do that same thing here. So we'll turn the feet away, externally rotating at the hip, and turn the toes back in, internally rotating at the hip. And then we're going to add a little something to that. Turn the toes away, and then press the outside of the foot further away. So as if you were trying to have the soles of the feet point toward each other and then press out with the inside edge of the feet as if you were trying to face the soles of the feet out to the outside, and then turn the toes inward and do that same thing. So we'll press the outside of the feet away, and then press the inside of the feet away, and then bring your legs back up to the center and just let the knees fold down toward the chest. Take a little relaxation there for the legs by gathering the knees in toward the respective armpits. This must look really strange. I feel very exposed here. Maybe I'll turn around the other way for a moment. And just take a little roll side to side. And now here's where a strap might come in handy if you um, have something strap-like um, to use. And I guess I will, um, let me see. I think I, maybe I should do this going this way again. So we're just going to have a little um, standing half moon on the floor here. So we're going to extend the right leg long, bring the left leg up overhead. Here you can hold it with a strap or you could hold on to your thigh or hold on to your pants. And then we're going to let the left leg come out to the side. So we're externally rotating it. Press out through the heel of the foot. And now press a little away with the inside of your foot so that you, your foot is um, square to your leg. And we could stretch the arms out to the side. So imagine it out to the side and you'd have a, a lovely looking uh, standing half moon here with the foot on the floor being the elevated foot. Ooh, my leg and then draw that leg back into the center, fold that knee to the chest, take a bit of a squeeze, stretch between the two legs, and that let your left foot come to the floor and press that away from you. And on an exhale, bring the right knee into the chest, and then we'll extend that leg upward overhead. Again, you can hold it with a strap or you can just hold it with your hand a little bit. And we're going to let that leg come away from the center of the body, just a comfortable distance, doesn't have to be terrifically far. Leading out with the heel, squaring the foot up relative to the leg and stretching the arms out to the side. Press through your uh, left foot as well, because we want to keep that leg active too in a standing half moon. Keep breathing here. And then we'll draw that extended leg up to the center. You can bend the knee, gather it in toward the chest, take a bit of a stretch between the two legs. Let that right foot fall to the floor, draw the left foot in, and take a few sways of the knees. You can stretch your arms out side to side. Just give a little roll of the hips side to side. And then roll over to one side. I gotta be careful here so I don't turn off my headphones and rest a moment and then use your arms to push yourself up away from the floor and come to a hands and knees position. So let's do just a little bit of movement here. So we'll exhale and stretch the hips back toward the heels and then extend the child's pose. Again, I gotta be careful not to turn myself off. And then roll forward, take a little bit of a cow back, stretching along the breastbone. Rock back onto hips over your heels. Don't have to come all the way back. So if your knees don't like to fold up, no worries. Don't fold them any further than they want to go. And 
And then we'll come forward to hands and knees again, putting the wrists under the shoulders and the knees under the hip joints. And let's have a little bit of spinal balance, just to get things warmed up a little better here. So we'll bring the right leg back behind, stretching it out, leading out with the heel, the torso as symmetrical as possible. Either inch the fingers out with the uh, left hand, or you can bring the left hand up alongside the ear. And we'll set that pair down on an exhale and inhale the opposite pair up, keeping the head and neck in line with the spine, letting the torso muscles support the belly, exhale those down. And we'll stretch it long. And on an exhale, bring the elbow and the knee toward each other under your body. They don't need to meet. And in particular, don't hunch your back up real tight here. Just draw the elbow and the knee toward each other and then extend them out again on an inhale. And then exhale that pair back down. And then bring the opposite pair out. And exhale to bring them toward each other and inhale them back out again. Keeping your body as steady as possible in the center here. And inhale them back out again. And set that pair back down. And now we're gonna have a sort of a, a half-legged standing half moon, otherwise known as gate pose. So I'm gonna turn this way because I think you can see me a little more easily. Just try to use my mat here. So we start out with a hands and knees position. And then we're going to bring um, the right foot forward. Now you can bring it up under your body. You can just come up to a kneeling position and then bring it forward. Or you could bring it out and around and get it there. Uh, whatever's good way to bring your right knee forward. And then we're gonna come up to a kneeling position. Let's see, I think you can still see my whole body, yep. Okay, good. And now we're gonna do this in two different ways. So to begin with, we're going to do the version where we're going to externally rotate at the hips. So you can just inch your foot out to the side and you can inch it out to wherever your hips feel like they are comfortable with this amount of external rotation. And then optional is to ooch your foot away from your body so that you are straightening out your extended leg. You don't have to straighten it at all and you don't have to move it out very, very far. So the torso is gonna stay square to the front. This leg is staying lined up, so square to the front. And then we're gonna have a little gate pose here. By inhale the arms up overhead, you can inhale your arms straight up overhead because you don't have to worry about knocking your headphones out. And we'll let the arm rest on the extended leg, but don't press down into the knee. So just bring it to the front or the back, just a little connection there and stretch up from your left knee through your left fingertips, making a little arc over in the direction of your extended leg. Let the breath travel into the open side of your ribs there. And now here's where the half moonish thing comes. We'll let that left arm come down in line with the left knee onto the floor or onto something taller than the floor. So, the floor seems like it's too far away, you could bring your hand instead to a chair. Put the legs of the chair onto your mat so that it doesn't try to slide away from you. So this would be a perfectly good way to do it too. And then we'll stretch up along the top side of the body and possibly bring that extended leg up away from the floor, still kind of externally rotated, pointing out and if you have your hand on the floor, it would look kind of like that. And then we'll let the leg come back down, inhale back upright again, and exhale the arms down, and bring the knee back underneath you. So we have a half-legged 
standing mountain position here with the knees under the hips, the shoulders over the hips over the knees, and we could just take a very loose little rotation side to side. Let your hips go as well so that this is an easy, easy rotation of the spine. And then come back to the center and we'll do that same version on the other side. So we'll bring the left foot forward, walk it out to the side so we're externally rotating at the hips. Optional how far around you come, also optional how much, if at all, you extend your um, leg out to the side. So your toe, your feet and your toes are going to be in line with the long bones of your legs uh, in this version of things. Torso, it's gonna to be rotated a little relative to the hips, the face front. And we'll inhale the arms up overhead and let your left arm drop near your left leg. So make a little connection there. Don't need to press any weight into it. And stretch from the right knee up through the right fingertips, making a little arc of your body here. And inhale back upright again. And then let the right hand come down either to the floor or to a chair or to a large book, perhaps. And we'll stretch along the top side of the body. This is quite a big stretch along the top hip here with the toe still pointing away from you. And if you like, you can bring the leg up off the floor. And let the leg down. Inhale yourself back upright again. And let the hands relax. And bring the knee back under you beside its partner. And we'll take another little loose swish side to side. So now we're going to have the third different orientation. So we're going to bring one foot forward again, but then we're just going to stick it out to the side with the toe pointing forward and the knee pointing forward. So if your ankles are flexible, you could roll your foot over so that your foot is flat. If your foot's ankles are not that flexible, then you might be kind of on the inside of the foot on that side. Either one will be fine. Your weight is centered between your two legs here, the torso facing forward. And we'll inhale the arms up overhead and let the hand come down to the extended leg. Again, don't press down through your knee, kind of hard on the knee. And we'll stretch up from the left Knee to the left fingers, breathe into the left side of the body. Again, opening on that side. And inhale back upright again. And now let the left hand come down either to the floor or to a chair. Take a stretch on the right side of the body. And notice how this feels different along the leg because your leg is facing forward instead of being externally rotated at the hip. Keep your head supported so that it's in line with the spine, both front to back and along the angle that the spine is making from the ground. And if you like, you can bring that foot up off the floor. And here we actually have a more faithful looking um, half-legged standing half moon with the toes pointing out to the front. And we'll let the leg drop and inhale back over head again and exhale the arms to the sides and return that knee under you and take any other kind of little loose swishing or bobbing that makes your body feel relaxed. Come back to the center with the knees under the hips and the shoulders over the hips and over the knees. And we'll bring the left foot forward this time and stretch it straight out to the side. So the foot is more or less in line with the knee. So you've kind of got a plane across the front of your body along this extended leg and along your torso. Okay? And the foot is facing forward now. I hope you can see that my, my toes are facing forward. And again, if your foot flattens, that's fine. If it doesn't flatten, you can let it rest on the inside of the foot. And we'll inhale the arms up over on the leg, but not pressing down into it. 
and stretch from the right knee up through the right fingers. Breathe into the right side of the torso. Let the ribs spread out on that side. Inhale back upright again. Stretch overhead. And now we'll let the right hand come down to the floor in line with the right knee and with the opposite leg too. And stretch along the top side of the body. And again, notice how this feels different past the hip, different also into the leg and the foot because we've got the uh, leg facing forward instead of the knee and the top of the foot facing up toward the ceiling. And then if you like, you can raise the foot away from the floor. And again, if the floor is too far away, just put your hand on something else to prop it up. A little chair maybe or something like that. And let the extended leg lower if you've raised it and inhale yourself back upright again. Exhale the arms down and return the knee underneath you. And pause and just take a few relaxed breaths here. And then we'll come up to a standing position. Okay. So first of all, we'll, um, we'll have a step back into warrior one. So we did some warrior one last, um, warrior one based positions last Thursday, and we're gonna do a few warrior two based things today. And so I wanna do warrior one first in order to point out some differences between those two things. So I think this will work best if I face forward here. And I'm just gonna make sure you can see my feet when I step back, so I'm just gonna step forward a little bit. Okay, so we'll stand in the standing mountain position. So find the joints of the hips, which are a little inside, a little down from the bony corners. Line up the legs and the feet along those lines. Let your weight center into your feet. Let's pause here for a moment. You can close your eyes, feel your weight going through your feet and into the floor. Take a few relaxed breaths, press into the inside edge of the feet, the outside edge, the pads across the base of the toes and the pad at the heel. Let's take a couple generous breaths here. And then bring the eyes open and we're gonna use the track established by the feet to take a generous step back with the uh, right foot. So back, straight back with the right toes and then let the heel turn in a bit. So how much is a bit? Well, we don't know exactly. But it depends. <laughs> it depends on how much your hips like to open because what has happened here? With the torso rotated toward the front, so the shoulders are square to the mat, we now have a little external rotation of the back leg and a little internal rotation of the front leg. Remember when we were turning the toes in and out? So we've got a little out with the back toe and we had a little in with the front toe because the torso is swiveled around in toward that front leg. So you can have external and internal rotation come from moving the leg or from moving the torso relative to the leg. And then we're going to press through the ball of the front foot, bend the knee, let the heel sink down. And just make sure that the front ankle hasn't grown past the front toe. So I'll switch around this way. So if you have a big distance between the front and the back foot, you could have a large bend to the knee. If you have a small distance, then you'd have less bend to the knee. And we'll just check to make sure that the torso is upright with the shoulders over the hips. And then we could bring the arms up to the ears and warrior arms. And just take a little check around, see how things are feeling. Your front leg, well, that leg's probably feeling reasonably relaxed. Maybe it's a little noticing bearing the weight there. And in the back leg, you might be feeling some things around the front of the hip, stretching there because you've got your leg behind your body now. So we have now extended at the hip, the leg is behind the line of the torso, and it's a little bit outwardly rotated. And then you remember those things we were doing with the feet of turning the edge of the foot in and out 
So to press your back foot into the floor, especially on the outside edge, keep the whole ankle well supported, you might be feeling some of those same stretches around the back of the leg. And another thing to notice here, I'll turn back in this direction, is that when we move the leg back, the, the hips go off to the right a little bit and we square the shoulders by moving the torso toward the front leg. And when we get to the warrior two positions, it's gonna be the opposite. Okay. And just stretch the arms out from side to side here and take a little loose swivel. Let your hips move to center, bring the hands to the heart and step back forward. Reestablish your standing mountain position. So you've got the track of the feet and then give a little bend to the knees. Take a generous step back with the left foot this time, land on the toes and then turn the back heel in a bit. And you can experiment with how much a bit is for you. Usually people say, well, point the toes toward the front corner of the mat, but you may find that a bit less or a bit more turning in would work for you. Press in the ball of the foot and bend the front knee. Swivel the torso a little bit so you're turning toward the front leg. Keep breathing here. You can bring the arms up to warrior arms. And then just check out, what do you feel here? What is happening in the front hip? What's happening in the back hip, at the front of the back hip? Especially what's happening down the outside in the back of the back leg? What about your ankle and your foot back there? And bring the arms out to the side. Take a little easy rotation one way and the other way, letting the hips fall along. and come back to the center and bring the hands to the heart and step forward. Okay, so now we're gonna start the Warrior Two series of things. So because we're going to um, eventually wind up with uh, the standing half moon, you might like to back up to a wall or you might like to have a chair handy so that the seat of the chair could be a little place to rest your hand for balance. So I'll just have both of them handy so that I could um, demonstrate these things. So if you're um, using a wall, you could just back up to the wall right now. We'll leave a little bit of space between you and the wall, between your feet and the wall, a few inches say, and step your uh, left foot out and Put it parallel to the wall and step your right foot back. The heels are going to be about lined up and your right foot is going to have its toes facing a little ahead of being perpendicular to the wall. So your hips are a little toward the front, not absolutely out to the side of the wall. Okay, so remember how I said that the torso was going to rotate a different direction. So we're going to rotate the torso open to be parallel to the long side of the mat, which means the back, the torso is rotating toward the back leg this time. Right? Okay. So let's just stop here a moment and take stock of things. So now we've got the front leg outwardly rotated and we've got the back leg a little bit inwardly rotated. Okay. And then we'll press into the ball of the front foot, raise the heel and then sink down. Maybe you need to make a little more distance front to back so as not to bend the front knee past the front ankle. And we could stretch the arms out from side to side and just take a little observation to make sure that you're Torso is upright with the shoulders over the hips rather than leaning out over the front leg. And then we could look out over the front hand here for a quite elegant warrior two. Just take a few breaths here.
And then we'll let the back hand come to the back thigh and turn the front palm up and reach up along the front side of the body from the hip up through the ribs and the torso out through the fingertips. Keep pressing into the feet, keep pressing into both the inside and the outside of both feet. And then we'll inhale back up to warrior two. So the legs just stayed where they started out and just the moving here. And now you can bring either the hand or the forearm down to the front thigh and take a stretch along the top side of the body. Options for the top hand are to make a teapot handle on the top hip. Keep stretching out with the spine. You've got the wall behind you, so no worries about falling over. You can have a deep extended side angle or a not so deep one. I'm going to cautiously reach my arm out here, keeping the shoulders wide open, so keeping the top arm back in line with the torso, keeping the head and neck in line with the spine. And now press through the feet and on an inhale, rotate back upward again. And exhale the arms to the side and turn the feet back forward and walk the feet back in toward the center. And we'll do that sequence of things on the other side. So we'll start in the standing mountain position, a little away from the wall. Or you don't need to be near a wall um, because this is not such a big balance challenge as the standing half moon will be in just a little bit. And we'll take the right foot this time. And, and I sure hope I'm doing the right and left. Um, I hope the words that are coming out of my mouth match what you're doing. So now your right foot is going to be parallel to the wall and you'll step your, your back foot back. The heel's about lined up, it's generally a good position. And now the back toes are a little ahead of being perpendicular to the wall. So the hips are going off a little bit toward the front. And again, we're gonna open up the opposite way of warrior one. So we're gonna swivel this way, away from the front leg toward the back leg. So quite a bit of external rotation at the front hip, a bit of internal rotation at the back hip. Torso upright, stretch the arms out from shoulder to shoulder. We'll press into the ball of the front foot, bend the knee, set it down, adjust your distance so that you get the amount of knee bend that you'd like to have. Maybe experiment a little bit with moving the shoulders relative to the hips. So see that you've got an upright position with the shoulders over the hips. Press into the inside and the outside of both feet, supporting the ankles, supporting the knees on each leg. And we'll let the back hand rest down to the back thigh, flip the front palm up, take a stretch along the front side of the body. Keep the shoulders open here so we're not gonna roll toward the front side of the body, but keep everything open. Keep breathing, let the ribs flare in and out. And inhale back upright again. And for the extended side angle, bring either your hand or your forearm down to the front thigh. Stretch the spine long. So you're stretching from the back heel all the way up the top side of your body, through your spine, out through your neck, out through the top of the head. You can keep hot handle or extend your arm out from the shoulder or extend your arm alongside the ear. If you're me, you're trying not to whack your headphones. Yeah, so maybe noticing the stretch along the top side of your hip there. And inhale back upright again, back to the warrior two, and let the arms drop, turn the feet forward, and walk the feet back together for a moment. Okie doke. So now, Let's have, the, let's have a little triangle pose. So I'm gonna do this uh, with the chair at the moment, but you can do it at the wall too. So the legs start out the same. So if you're using the chair, your, um, your right foot is going to point out toward the seat of the chair and the, back foot will be uh, stepped back 
heel lineup is good. Um, the toes of the back foot a little ahead of the perpendicular to the long side of your mat. Torso rotated open, same as with warrior two. And now put the hands to the hips and you do exactly the same thing if you're standing against the wall. And we're gonna let the front rim of the pelvis sink down by creasing at the front hip and the back rim come up and keep everything else open facing toward the long side of your mat when your hips stop this hinging motion, you stop, okay? Probably nowhere near the floor, that will be fine. So you need a place to rest your hand. You could rest it on the inside or the outside of your leg just for a little uh, stability there. Don't press into your knee, however, or you could put your palm on the seat of the chair you Can leave the top hand standing on your hip, or you could reach it out from the shoulder. Head is back in line with the spine. Head is in line with the angle that your spine is making relative to the floor. And take a little bend to the knee and rotate back up again. And basically we're gonna use that same starting point for the standing half moon. So if you're using the chair, I'll just demonstrate it with both the chair and the wall. So if you're using the chair, you're gonna take a bend to the front knee, start shifting your weight forward into that leg. You can put your hand on to the chair, might have to adjust the distance of the chair from your body. Raise the back leg away from the floor. Stretch the leg out. You can leave a bend in the front knee. Stay as long as you like, as long as you feel comfortable, and then gently let the back leg back down to the floor, coming back to the triangle leg. If you're doing it at the wall, same legs as for triangle. You can sort of splatter yourself out against the wall to begin. Give a bend to the front knee. Gradually shift your weight forward onto that leg. You let your back rest onto the wall and stretch yourself out. And just use the wall for a little bit of support back there. Keep the head and neck in line with the spine. Keep the torso and the raised leg in line so you could be way over. You could leave your back foot on the floor and just be kind of laid out like this along the floor. When you're done experimenting, lower yourself back to the floor and come back upright again. And I'll just wait a moment so that everyone can have their fill of experimenting on that side. And then we'll go to the other side. So for the chair version, I'm gonna move my chair to the other side. So if you're using the chair for support, always a good idea to have at least two um, legs of the chair on the mat so that it doesn't get away from you. So with the chair, we're gonna point the right toes out toward the chair and the back toes are going to be a little ahead of being uh, perpendicular to the long side of the mat. Heels lined up is good. Torso rotated open, so you're rotating in the direction of the back leg. We'll do triangle first, putting the hands onto the rim of the hips, deepening the crease at the front hip joint, letting the whole pelvis tip. When your pelvis stops tipping, you stop tipping. You can bring the front hand down for support to the chair seat, or you can put it to the inside of the outside of your front leg keeping the shoulders rolled open. If you like, you can either teapot the front arm or you can extend the arm out from the shoulder. Keep breathing, of course, keep stretching the spine long. Give a little bend to the front knee, tip back up again for a moment. And then we'll use that same leg and upper body posture to begin the standing half moon. 
So we'll bend the front knee, start pushing off with the back foot. Okay, so have the chair a little further away. You can bring your hand to the chair for support and bring yourself as far up away from the which could be not very far at all, could be just a little bit. Yeah. So your torso goes down to the same degree that your upper body, your lower leg, rather the raised leg is going up so that you keep a long line up from your leg through the torso. And if you're doing a set the wall, the right foot is parallel to the wall. The back foot is a bit ahead of being perpendicular to the wall. Lay yourself out, rotating the torso so that your shoulders are more or less square to the wall. Give a bend to the front onto the back toes. Keep right there. Long line from your back foot up through your torso, out through the top of your head. Or if you like, but only so far with the torso down as the leg is going up, head keeping in line with the rest of the body. And keep breathing, especially while you're doing something effortful. And give a little bend to the knee and gently let yourself back down again. And turn the toes to place front and let the arms drop and walk the legs back in. And we'll just let the legs be a bit wider than shoulder width apart and take a real easy swish from side to side. Letting the knees bend and let the heel come up for a very easy, relaxing little twist. All right. Well, that was a bit of an adventure. Walk the feet back together. So we'll come back toward the floor. You can come in any way that you find safe and comfortable, but one way is to inhale the, the arms overhead, exhale and hinge forward. Let the hands slide down the legs, keep the spine reaching along, the head and the neck long in line with the spine. Keep bending the knees till your hands come down to the ground. Walk the feet back behind you. Make a long triangle with your torso and your arms, your legs and the floor. Rise up on the toes, sink the heels down. Just press away from the floor with the hands and lower the knees to the floor. Let your weight roll forward till you have a half plank position. If you're going to be a little deviating from a line from the heels to the top of the head, let your bum be a little high rather than a little low. Bend at the elbows. Keep the elbows close to your body. Lower yourself down to the floor. Let your chin or your forehead rest in line with the body. Stretch your arms back behind you with the palms down and the thumbs facing away from you. And we'll just have a little locust here. So on an inhale, stretch through the top of your head, your feet, and your fingers so that the face and a little bit of your top of your chest come away from the floor and your legs come a little away from the floor. And exhale back down. And inhale up again. And exhale back down. And then roll over onto your back. and make yourself comfortable with your feet flat at about hips distance width apart and your arms resting on the floor. We'll just take a short figure four stretch, laying the left ankle across the right thigh above the knee, sticking the foot out beyond the leg. Just let your left knee roll away from your body you can let your hips roll side to side a little bit while your leg is in that position. It's kind of relaxing. And come back to the center and unwind that leg, place that foot back to the floor, and now bring your right foot across the left thigh. 
Give a little flexion at the ankle to that raised foot. Let the knee roll away from your body. And again, you can just roll up on one hip and onto the other hip. And bring that foot back to the floor. Walk the legs far apart, maybe even wider than the mat. You can stretch your arms out to the side. And just take some easy, slow, slow deep sways of the knees side to side. One knee is falling in while the other one is going out. And then bring your knees back up to the center, walk them in toward each other and make yourself comfortable in a Shavasana position. So you could, if you've been using the wall and still handy and available, you could uh, set yourself up at the wall with the legs up the wall, or you can take the classic corpse pose lying on the floor. Regardless of how you're lying, Take the opportunity to turn your palms up toward the ceiling and rest the back of your arms, the back of your shoulders, and the back of your hands onto the floor. You can have them however far away from your body is comfortable. You can either have your legs outstretched if that's comfortable, allowing your legs just to flop wherever they feel good, or you can have your uh, knees bent and your feet flat with your knees knocked together. Take any position that lets you be completely at rest here. Let your breath be easy in and easy out. Aware of your thoughts, but not really attending to them just now. Aware of the sounds around you, but not really attending to them just now. Now, if you'd like a longer Shavasana than just a few minutes, feel free to disconnect yourself so that you can take as long a Shavasana as you would like. Now let your breathing become a little bit deeper. Begin to bring a little movement to your hands and feet, perhaps by wiggling the fingers and the toes, maybe a little circling of the hands around the wrists and the feet around the ankles. Take a few generous breaths here similar to those ones we took earlier, kind of expanding the lungs and then breathing out fully.
move one knee at a time, bending the knee to bring the foot in toward your body. You can either have your feet flat to the floor with the knees bent or bring the knees in toward your chest. Take either a little swish of the knees side to side, just very slowly, or a little roll side to side. And as you're ready, let yourself roll over onto one side. Got to be careful not to turn myself off here. Just take a few breaths with your eyes closed. And then use your arms to push yourself from the floor so your torso is sort of facing down toward the floor as you push yourself away. And take whatever you like for a comfortable seat for just a minute here. This bones, weight going into your legs and your feet as well in, as into the sits bones. Let your shoulders settle back in line with the hips. Position your hands so that your shoulders are a little behind your body and your elbows hang close to the side. Bring the palms together and the thumbs toward the breastbone. You feel your heart and your breath. And we'll close with one ohm after an inhale. Oh. Namaste.